You know, I really didn't think Fiona and Cake would be this serialized. I thought each episode was going to be a new universe, and that was it. And while these two most recent episodes have definitely opened us up to the multiverse a bit more, you could easily smash together these episodes into a long movie, especially with this intro scene for episode 5. You know, I love myself a good cold open, and this is one cold open. Okay, bad joke. But it really was a stroke of genius showing us this scene with Farm World Finn icing this poor family. I love how they really lean into the horror element of the ice crown here. But I hear some of you casual fans saying, Huh? What? When? Where? Yeah, episode number 5 is not afraid to leave you casuals in the dark. So, in case you need a refresher, this is what's known in Adventure Time as Farm World Dimension. In the season 5 premiere of the main series titled Finn the Human, the Lich takes the form of Billy and tricks Finn and Jake into opening a portal to Prismo the Wishmaster's time room. The Lich, now granted one wish, wishes for the extinction of all life. To counteract this wish, Finn uses his wish to create a reality where the Lich never existed. This creates a new dimension we call Farm World. In this new timeline, Simon sacrificed himself to stop the Mushroom Bomb, instead of it going off and creating the Lich, like it did in the normal timeline. 1,000 Farm World years later and Finn finds the Ice Crown and uses it to try and save his family from the Destiny Gang. But putting it on his head, he's filled with the same magic, madness, and sadness that created Ice King. In trying to save his family, he accidentally sets off the Mushroom Bomb and its detonation creates the Lich anyway. The cold open is actually a flashback to right after the following episode Jake the Dog, where Jake uses his wish to reverse Finn's wish. It works, but Farm World Dimension continues to exist. And so does Ice Finn, as we see in a Season 7 episode crossover. In this episode, Finn and Jake are tasked with taking out Ice Finn, who has now actually teamed up with the Lich to open a portal to the multiverse. Finn and Jake stop him, and to help Ice Finn with his MMS, Prismo destroys Farm World's Ice Crown to stop the chaos. This episode of Fiona and Cake picks up right where Crossover leaves off, with Finn returning to normal and Jake being a regular dog. Really cool concept for an episode, but to those of you who aren't up to date on the complete series timeline, it was probably confusing. I really, really love this episode, but it honestly could have benefited from some explanation for viewers who weren't completely caught up with the Farm World arc. So in this new time jump, Fiona, Cake, and Simon are looking for another Ice Crown. Simon says in order to get them back in his head, he'll just do the same ritual again, but on purpose this time. I frankly don't believe he's being honest with them. I think right now he's just saying whatever he needs to say so they'll go along with it. So they go into town, and we get an almost Mad Max-esque looking environment. And we actually see some familiar faces. Shoes Bruce, and even Big Destiny and the rest of his gang. Big D's just chillin', Wasteland style. I love the detail of Cake putting the bag on her head as part of the disguise. And then later we get to see some random background characters also wearing bags on their heads. <laughs> That's just awesome. Then we meet a blonde haired kid, who takes the gang back to a cabin in the woods. Finally, we get to meet Finn the Trucker. Yeah, you're right, Apocalypse Finn is better. We get to meet his four kids, and one of them is a redhead, while the other three are blonde. They say that their mom is dead, although the hair makes you wonder, who was the mom? It's pretty much impossible to tell since this is Farm World, but if Choose Bruce is anything to go off of, we could reasonably assume that some Adventure Time characters have counterparts in Farm World Universe. She would have to be around Finn's age, a redhead, maybe like a flame princess counterpart? I really can't think of anyone else it might be. Small detail, but fun to think about. Interestingly enough, there's one wide shot where we see a drawing of the Candy Kingdom, with its tree in the center and some of its candy citizens. Maybe there's an entire non-magical Candy Kingdom counterpart too? Or maybe just a cool easter egg, who knows. Cake says that Fiona and Finn should kiss. Ugh, uh, mm, I don't like where that's going. The Scarab pops into Farm World and asks Finn where the gang is hiding, but they're at the crater where the mushroom bomb went off looking for the crown. They find it, but it's been completely pulverized. Remember, Prismo destroyed it by placing it at ground zero, and since it was in fact destroyed, we can actually put together a power scale for the Adventure Time universe. So the crown was destroyed by the bomb completely, but not by the Catalyst Comet as we saw in the episode Evergreen. So in a game of rock, paper, scissors, Bomb beats Crown, beats Catalyst Comet. Interesting that the Comet is the lowest on the list, even though it seems to do the most damage to the rest of the planet. Anyway, it turns out Big Destiny's kid and Finn Jr. are romantically involved. Finn Jr. gave her one of the Crown's jewels that he found, and she kept it as a necklace, but it's been making her sick. We have actually seen this before. The Crown's jewels mucking things up, even when it's separate from the main thing. And you know what this probably means? 
We actually have an answer for how Turtle Princess died so quickly. The Ice Thing used one of its gems to make a wedding ring for her, and after she wore it for long enough, its mere proximity to her body eventually killed her. Big D and Finn show up to stop everything, but so does the Scarab, and damn, Apocalypse Finn's got a flamethrower hand, fuck yeah. But he also bites the dust, hardcore. Simon, Fiona, and Cake in the Scarab all get teleported to another universe, and the episode ends. What a phenomenal episode. I love this chance to revisit Farm World one last time. And I'm really curious about the state of magic in this world, though. Because the bomb still went off, right? Sure, the Ice Crown was destroyed. But the mutagenic bomb still went off. The Lich was destroyed by Classic Finn and Jake, but technically, magic still exists because of the bomb's effects. Or is this episode implying that the Lich himself birthed magic and not the bomb? That would explain Farmworld Lich's Jake farm having stretching powers in crossover. So if you don't know, Jake got his powers from this guy, a being from another dimension. But the Lich himself, being the catalyst for widespread magic, would explain why he's able to stretch. Even though this Jake never got bit by this other dimensional creature. Or maybe he did, but it required a magical kickstarting like the Lich to activate. I'll link the Uncivilized Elk video on this topic. Honestly, it's ultimately more likely that magic does exist in Farmworld because of the bomb, but it just takes a long time to take root and spread across the land, who knows. The second episode definitely isn't as lore-heavy, but it's still a really fun time. We open this one with a non-magic Prince Gumball, or Gary, getting into Fiona's apartment. And someone filled this episode to the brim with Gary x Marshall Lee shipping fuel. And it honestly really works. Their chemistry is off the charts. We won't be following them in this recap, but I'm excited to see more of them in the last few episodes. Also, that LSP cameo had me dying, bro. The new universe that everyone got transported to was an alternate OO where the Ice King is sane and Princess Bubblegum is kidnapping him. It's a fairly creative spin on the Adventure Time formula, and it plays out like a season one episode. The Winter Prince freezes the Scarab, which I really didn't think would work. I honestly wish they weren't nerfing the Scarab to this degree, because he really doesn't feel like a genuine threat right now. But maybe the next few episodes will fix that. The Winter King agrees to forge Simon a new crown. It doesn't end up happening, but again, I really don't think this would have worked. No tech Betty ever implemented was ever able to reprogram or recreate the crown. So what could the Winter King possibly have that could do it? Maybe he was fibbing, honestly, I don't know. Maybe since he's using the Ice Crown, it's able to duplicate its powers, the same way Evergreen was able to create it. We get a killer song with a sweet new art style. It's really evocative of a Willy Wonka type story, and it's got a good beat, not gonna lie. I'm not sure who animated this scene, but it feels like a small Butera project. They guest animated the season 8 episode Beyond the Grotto, and it's got their signature bouncy line art. If you know who animated this, please tell me in the comments. The second the song is over, Cake wants them to make out. Yo, Cake, what is up with this weird thing you have with parallel universe variants hooking up? You gotta stop, dude. This isn't Loki. All joking aside, Cake is just amazing. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. In other news, the animators have gone off the rails and given Winter King a bulge in several shots. Awesome. It also seems like the Winter King created an Ice Marceline, which really makes me wonder what happened to her in this timeline. Did the Ice Crown reverting its MMS somehow cause a change so drastic that Marceline died? Or maybe she just left? With Bubblegum out of the picture, that might have happened. Speaking of Bubblegum, it turns out that in this universe, the Ice King somehow managed to use a spell to sort of move the magic madness and sadness over to PD, which is kinda insane if you think about it. Technically, this means that once Simon gets his crown back, he could just do the same thing to someone else and remain sane. Bubblegum sings a pretty catchy song, and instead of being terrified, Simon's just vibing with it. I get the sense that he's just curious why Ice King chasing after PB seems to be a constant in these universes. Does PB really remind him that much of Betty? No, the MMS is tied to the crown and not necessarily its bearer, because PB doesn't really have a Betty equivalent. Paired up with the B story with Gary and Marsha Lee, it seems that the episode wants us to draw comparisons between a healthy relationship and a toxic one. A nice contrast, but I don't really see how it answers our question. So why would the Ice Crown amplify the feeling of love or infatuation to the point of obsession? We've never really thought about it before. Maybe the Ice Crown instead amplifies the feeling of loneliness and isolation within oneself, and kidnapping is just a natural response to that extreme loneliness. Or, alternatively, Evergreen was incredibly lonely inside. And since the original wish was to turn Gunter into Evergreen, 
it also copied this loneliness factor, and now it copies it into everyone after. Yeah, that sounds right. Fiona knocks out Bubblegum and gives the crown back to the Winter King, and what happens next is... definitely strange. They actually do kiss, but the crown gets its magic zapped out of it by... not Prismo, but some other thing? It's got Prismo's look to it, but it's not Prismo, not likely. Could this be Prismo's boss trying to intervene? Regardless, this immediately kills the Winter Prince, and once he turns back into regular Simon for a split second, you realize how fucked up that kiss really was. Winter King is old, man, and Fiona is like barely an adult. Oh, yikes. With the crown reverted, PB returns to normal, and she says that Fiona's kiss broke the curse, but maybe the Scarab has a point. Are Fiona and Cake breaking the multiverse when they touch things the wrong way? I guess this might not be Prismo's boss after all. It's just their influence. This has some really bad implications. The Scarab unfreezes after the curse is lifted, and Fiona and Cake get zapped to another universe with babies. Baby characters, I like how this universe is just a one-off joke and not an entire episode. The babyfication of characters is a tired trope, and it seems to be self-aware of that fact. Hence, it's a one-off joke. Although Buff Baby Finn is truly adorable, and Baby Lich is truly horrifying. Fist Bump with Baby Finn episode ends. I really liked how fun this episode was. We got two songs, some guest animation, and some implications on the Ice Crown's powers and abilities. And the Gary and Marshall Lee stuff was fun too. I knew I had to go even harder with this review because you guys watched the crap out of that last video. So I hope you enjoyed my breakdown and review of Destiny and the Wizard King. I wanted to take some more time in this video to go a lot more in depth on the Adventure Time lore. Because this series is bringing out some really deep cut references and I don't want you to be lost. Also, I hope you enjoyed the preview of some of the improvements I've been making in between uploads. I'll get to really show them off in the next big video essay. So look forward to that soon-ish. And we'll also be back next week to review episodes 7 and 8 of Fiona and Cake. My name is Candles, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.